Hello and welcome to section 5 in which we will be diving deeper into object orientation with Python. So in this section we will start using inheritance to extend our classes. Then we'll look into how we can use multiple inheritance from Python. We'll use polymorphism. We'll use duct typing which is a special feature of Python. Then we'll be using mixins, which are classes to add additional functionality. We'll be looking at class methods to define additional constructors. We'll be looking at the concept of closures and compare them to OOP classes. And we'll be using threads. We'll start and stop them to run our program. And in the end, we will be passing data using uh, queues, which is a concept of multiprocessing. So in this video 5.1, We'll be using inheritance to extend our own classes. So we use inheritance to extend our own classes and we'll understand the concept of super and base classes, which are actually the same thing. We'll be inheriting methods from the super base class. We'll be adding to the inherited functionality in our own class. We'll be overriding inherited methods and then we'll see how even though overwritten some of the methods of the super base class, we can still invoke that functionality should we choose to do so. So what is inheritance? It's a big concept in the object oriented world of programming. So actually we've already been using inheritance because in Python, every class we create ultimately derives from the base class called object. And that's the name inside of the parenthesis after our class name. And we can also leave it out. So here I didn't put in a name, but it still inherits from the base class object. So this, this here is the same as if we would write object into it. So it's the same, even though we might not notice it. Every class in Python we create inherits either explicitly or implicitly from the base class object. So just to clarify some naming here, what's a base class, what's a super class, what's a parent class, it's all the same thing actually. It depends how you look at it. We can look at the picture as a pyramid. So if you look at it, the pyramid standing up, the base is the bottom and it's a foundation. So we build our own classes inheriting from the base, adding more functionality. So we're standing on that strong foundation. And if you tilt the pyramid upside down, then it's our super class. And it's, well, it's super because we get some free stuff from it and then we add to it. We can also look at it as a parent and a child. So it's just a naming, just names. Super base parent clause, all the same thing. The main thing is we inherit from it. So here in this code snippet, we create two classes. One is a base class and it has a method called print underscore base and it has a print statement in it. And then we have a second class. And from now on, most classes I will call Python class, just a name, doesn't matter. Important thing is in the parenthesis here, in addition to object, which we don't specify, we also inherit from base class, which is this guy here. And then it's typical for Python to start with the Python initializer, double underscore leading and trailing surrounding the word init and self here. So self refers to the instance of this class. So now we can create an instance of the class, adding parentheses behind the name of the class. We don't have to pass anything in because and it doesn't expect any or doesn't require any arguments. So we create an instance of the class, use, save it in a variable. I call it instance, can be any name, doesn't matter. So instance here, and then we do use dot notation to call the print base method. And now Python class doesn't have this method, but because Python class inherits from base class, it inherits the base class print underscore base method. So when we now run this code, even though our Python base class doesn't have the print underscore base method, it inherits it via inheritance and it invokes it and it prints out, it calls this method. So that's the foundation of inheritance using object-oriented programming in any language, and we are using Python here.
So next, we want to add functionality to our base class. And we want it to, well, we add an initializer here, and the initializer expects a name argument. And we give it a default value in our print base method. We're going to use this name, and it's typical in OOP that the passed in variable gets saved with self dot some name because when we do this, we can access this variable self dot name. We can access it within the instances of the class in any other method. If you wouldn't add the self, then the name would be local to only the init method, and we wouldn't be able to access it from any other method. So that's typical. You'll see that all over self dot often the same name as the variable that's being passed in. So we are expecting in the base class a name and we give it a default value and we use this name here, use format dot name in the print base method. And we might expect that when we run the code, because the name variable here gets saved locally as an instance variable and then used in this method, we might expect that this code works. So let's look at it. Does this work? Well, let's run it. So when we run it, it blows up. It doesn't work. So it says attribute error. Python class object has no attribute name. So what's going on here? Well, let's look at that. So what's going on is because we are inheriting in our Python class from another class, we have to initialize that class. So even though we don't pass in any variables, any arguments, uh, we still have to initialize our super class, our super base class. And we do that. We are in Python 3. We do it. We are the syntax super parenthesis dot then double underscore init parenthesis. So this line here calls the init method of our base class. And then the name variable with a default value gets assigned as a local variable for an instance variable and then being used here. So when we run this code now, suddenly it works. So that's what we expected, but what we didn't do in previous code, we, we forgot to call super init from our init in the inheriting clause. That's important. So now we can also expect arguments within our base class, I mean, in our inheriting clause. So Python class and initializer, we now say we expect the name and we default it to Python. And uh, when we run this now, we, when we create the Python class, we put in a positional argument, a string, call it Eric, any name. And now here in our Python class init method, when we call super, which is the base class or super class, we pass in the name. So if we take Eric out here, we don't give it a name and just run it, it'll use the default value. So instead of saying hello, Eric from base class, when we run it now, it says hello, Python from base class. So what's going on here is in our initializer, we are passing in an argument to the initializer of our base class. And uh, so we are overriding the default value. So instead of saying hello, default, it's saying now hello, Python from base class. And that's part of OOP. And, and the cool thing is we can, in object-oriented programming, we can also create the same method we are inheriting and we overwrite it. So overwriting, that's overwriting. So we overwrite the method. And what's going on here is now, even though we have a name, and we're passing it into the super class for the default name here. We're passing a name in here and print base uses this name, but because we created the same name method in our inheriting class, this guy here now gets called. So we can see the output is hello from Python class here. And this one is not being used. We are basically overriding the method of the base class by creating the same method in our inheriting class. So in this case, we wanted to do that. We wanted to 
have our inheriting Python class do something else when the print base class is being called, but we are not limited to it. We can do both things. We can override the base class method, do our own implementation here, do something other than what the base class would do. But then if we still want the implementation we are inheriting from the base class, we can use the same syntax as we use the initializer. We can do super parenthesis dot notation, and then we can call the, the base class method. So we get both basically. So we get here, hello, the overwritten section, and then we call the base class and it says, we pass a Python here in the initializer. So it says hello Python. It doesn't say hello default. It says hello Python from base class. So we override it, the method, and then we still invoke base class method. In this video, we looked at inheritance. We understood the concept of a super and a base class, which are basically the same. We saw how inheritance can extend our own classes. We overwrote methods from the base class and in the end we saw how even after overriding base class we can still invoke the original method we inherit from the base class.